the the defensive numbers were pretty good for you guys. They only shot thirty eight percent. Do you feel like uh, the defense was much better tonight? The adjustments you were looking for? Yeah, I mean it was good until the, about seven minutes of that third quarter. We made some costly mistakes on their best shooters and bang bang threes. And then transition defense, we struggled. We couldn't make a bucket. We missed shots, turning it over. Good shots, some not as good as we would want. And then uh, the transition, they were just running down. They were playing free. They were down a big number. Uh, but defensively, I thought we got into them. We made them miss. We made them take uh, tougher shots than we want. And it, it was all all. It was a good win for us. We needed the uh, we needed the win to get off. Um, you know, get that the bad taste in your mouth from from last game. But I thought the guys came back. We responded and played the right way. Uh, take away, you know, seven minutes of that third quarter. I thought throughout the game we played a good brand of basketball. And what's the latest on Brad? I understand he had to leave with the hip contusion. Uh, I haven't I haven't talked to him or the the staff, but uh, that's all I know is right now he he got he hit the floor pretty hard. Um, but you guys know as well as I know, and I keep saying it, I don't just say it. He's as tough as nails. And he, I've been around a lot of guys that can bounce back, and he might be one of the best ones. And actually, we have two of them on our team. Uh, but yeah, Brad, we'll see how he feels tomorrow and then make that decision come uh, the next game. Ava. And Scott, what did you think of uh, Daniel Gafford in his in his debut here? Yeah, I mean, I was a little disappointed that he missed the shot. And I told him, I told him, I didn't, I didn't think that he was going to make every shot, but he did in that first half. He played exactly what you know Tommy told me he was going to do. I mean, I've I've seen him, I've watched him, watch film, played against him, um, but this is what he does. He's a he has great bounce. We got a lob threat. We can throw it up in the air. And like I said, we can we can throw a, a bad pass, and he can he has the ability to go out and extend and and, and get it. He has great hands, finishes round. He can block some shots. He alters some shots. I thought he had a I mean he had a, just a fantastic game. It's a great first game for him. We're gonna keep working with him. He's a, like I said, he's a he's a he's definitely a keeper. He has a chance to be really good for a lot of years with, with this skill set. Fred. Scott, you uh, you said you put Denny in the starting lineup pregame as just kind of a way of of activating him. I think was the way that you phrased it. Yeah. What I, I you didn't play him in the fourth quarter, but he he got twenty six minutes. What what did you see from him tonight? I thought he played solid. Uh, I thought he could have done a few things better, but that's every every game, every player, not just him. But I thought he played solid. He missed a couple of threes that could have really. Um, started it off good and he missed the dunk but I thought he was good defensively made a couple of mistakes on their on their shooters but they Ellington is he's good I mean he's good and and Bay he's a he's a big time player he's a very good solid rookie that makes shots um but I thought Danny Danny had some good um playmaking you know he's we we put the ball in his hands a little bit I thought he made some pretty good decisions and and on a related note, you went to Jerome for the final quarter and a half. That's the first time you've played him in about about a month and a half. What inspired that decision? Yeah, we needed some scoring. You know, we scored. I don't know how many. We ended up with eleven points in that third quarter. We needed some scoring, um, and we needed a we needed a spark. Uh, whether that worked or not, uh, I thought it was I thought it was good because we we got back. He gave us good bounce. He has good experience. He he wasn't going for offensive rebounds. He was getting back in transition. He competed on defense. I thought he give him a lot of credit. I had a great conversation with him yesterday, and he handled it like like I knew he would. Um, he's a pro. He works hard. There's just not a lot of minutes. There's not a lot of minutes where we got some a couple of players that have a chance to be, you know, good, and, and we're going to keep working with them, and they're they're. But I thought he played. I thought he played a solid game, and that's like I said, it's not easy not playing for you know a month or so, even longer, and to come in and, and give us solid minutes and, and big minutes because you know we were let's face it, we were bleeding, but he, he got us some stops and got us some buckets, and I thought he was good.
Zach. Hey, Coach. Uh, Rui had a big dunk in the first quarter and followed it up with a big roar, which seemed to energize the bench. Uh, what did you think about him playing with and showing a lot of emotion like that? I love it. I think he needs more of it. Uh, I think he's getting he's getting used to the, the NBA way. You got to play with that emotion, that passion, that that edge. And I, I thought he, he he started the game that way. And then I thought the in the, the third quarter wasn't as good as we wanted it to be. And then the fourth quarter, he made some good plays. He, we posted them up. He made some big shots. And I thought big shots. Like I said, we were we were struggling looking for points. I mean, Brad is obviously a, a, a point maker. Uh, and he moves that scoreboard is better than anybody in the league this year. So, and but I thought Rui came in and gave us some good uh, post up touches on the right right um, mid post. But he was good in the fourth quarter, which we needed every 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 point he gave us. Christos, hello, coach. Congratulations on the win. Speaking for Gafford, it was a kind of surprise for you that his performance tonight. What did you, did you expect from him tonight? I mean, I didn't expect him to go whatever he was, six for seven. I mean, I like that. I know he, he's, a, he's, a, he's a high percentage uh, shot maker because he takes good shots. He takes, put, I mean, dunks, lobs, putbacks. He doesn't shoot a lot of shots outside the paint. He knows his, he knows his role, and that is the roll to the basket and find shots around the rim, put pressure on the rim. And that's what we need. And he can get out of a pick and roll from midcourt pretty, pretty darn quick. Those first two steps, he's at the rim. And if you're late, and if you want to foul him, you're going you're gonna to get him on one free throw because he's going to be up in the air already. And that's exciting. I thought Brad started it off, you know, Brad, you know, just baiting their defensive big. And, and that's a tough position. I mean, we've been in that position uh, times as – more times than we would like to be where you you a big has to make a decision guard a guy that's coming at him that is a big time score if you make a split second mistake you can throw it up and gaff is going to be able to get that and i thought brad started it off and russell did and then we we all had a lot of looks to him uh daniel how was it just getting out there for the first time in a wizard's uniform oh it was great i mean you know everybody was out there everybody was motivating Everybody walked me in, we just like one big happy family, you know. Um, felt good. I mean, I just came out there and did what I had to do. That's pretty much it on that, you know, I was ready to play. And did you get to see the uh, Razorback score tonight? Second important question. Oh, uh, I did. Um, once I got back to, you know, the locker room and stuff, I seen they won by two. You know what I'm saying? We in the Elite Eight. We try to go all the way. We're big sweet, baby. <laughs> Um, hey, Daniel, um, you know, you know, Brad, when we asked him about you, he said you might be the best lob threat that he's had uh, since he got here. And then sure enough, you guys connect on that pick and roll. Um, what was that play like for you? And, and what about the connection you think you can develop with Brad? Um, I feel like a great connection can be made because, I mean, you know, I just come out and I try to get guys open as much as I can. And for Brad and Westbrook, you know, for them having so much attention on them coming off the pick and rolls and stuff, for them getting downhill and being able to throw the lobs, that's just the best thing for me. You know, they can throw it to the moon and I'll go back, so I'll go up there and bring it back down to earth. So, Fred. Hey, Daniel. Um, you're obviously not the first guy in the history of the league to get traded in the middle of the season, but especially this year, there are just so few practices and so many games that are kind of all packed in together. And tonight you play without a practice. What's that like going out there and not knowing plays, not being familiar with just like normal defensive signal calling and all that kind of stuff. And what's your strategy with trying to learn that stuff without getting that normal amount of practice time? Um, I really tried to study as much as I possibly could during the time that I was, you know, given the, you know, res for like resources and stuff to like figure out the plays and stuff. You so know, it was it was kind of tough going out there, but I mean, the coaching staff and the players and everything, like all the team, all my teammates and stuff, they always made sure that I was in the right spot and they talked me through it. 
And it was just, you know, something that I really needed because I didn't want to be out there just like, you know, chicken with his head cut off and being in the wrong spot, certain things like that, because Russ, I think he would yell at me. So, <laughs> so um, you know, just having people, you know, on your side, just letting you know where to be at and what the play is and where you, where you need to be at and what you got to do during that play, that's just the biggest thing for me and just having them right there and just helping me do it. Thanks, man. Christos. Hello, Daniel. Congratulations on the win and the performance as well. First uh, game as a wizard, first win, first great game for you coming off the bench. Did, did you imagine that uh, that debut for yourself? Say again. You kind of low. I could. Did you imagine a game like this for you tonight? Uh, I mean, you know, I really. I really don't try to dwell on, you know, the type of game that, you know, I want to have or anything like that. I just try to let the game come to me. I don't try to, you know, go force anything or anything like that, you know. But, I mean, I had a good game, you know, just give myself a pat on the back and get ready for the next one because the simple fact, you know, I really don't try to dwell on, you know, the things I did in the game. They weren't good, but, you know, this game is in the past now, so I got to be ready for the next one. Thank you. Last question to Ava. Uh, Daniel, so many people have mentioned it, and you just talked about it yourself. You you really stick to what you're good at and you kind of play within your game. Um, it's not super common for young players, I guess, but when did you kind of learn that or, or who kind of told you that early on in your career, if anybody did? Just like being in high school, you know, my high school coach always told me just be me. That was the main thing he always told me. So I just went out and did the things that I did good and tried to do it better. That was, that's just my main thing. Just come out, be myself, not really try to be anybody that, you know, I can't be. You know, I did because, you know, some of the things that I try to do in some games, you know, those things that I work on, but, you know, it kind of feels uncomfortable. I'm not a, I'm not out of my comfort zone yet with that. So just being able to have those certain skills and build on those certain skills and just come out and do that every night is really, really big for me. And just being myself, that's the main key for it. Hey, Rui, you had the one dunk earlier in the game. Um, showed a lot of emotion after that. Even after one of Westbrook's dunks in the previous game, you showed a lot of emotion, you know, there too. Scott was talking about, you know, yeah, they want you to show more emotion. I guess what has that process been like? I would think that, you know, you're a little bit more reserved coming into the league, but now, you know, really showing that emotion. Um, you know, we just, we lost a couple games, uh, top ones, and then, before so like you know we have to I today I we our mentality was like you know from the beginning we have to show the emotions for the defense and they're just being aggressive and then, yeah that was a kind of a statement you know the beginning of the games and I wanted to make the statement that this game is like you know ours and then yeah and then we got a two new guys um you know kind of yeah this is like a I want to like you know change the you know the the rhythm of this team right now. So you know that's why I I, I kind of yeah I kind of wanted to dunk that and yeah I showed emotion. Fred, hey Rui, just just about that dunk. Um, where where does that rank for you amongst your best dunks? Oh, it was a top three. It was a top three. Um, I had it like that in college when I was in the freshman year. And yeah, I think that was top three. I liked it then. I saw the I saw the on the after the game I saw the I saw the highlight highlights and stuff and yeah, I liked it. <laughs> and uh I'll ask you, where'd you get the, the Darvish shirt? Hey. Um so basically this is um yeah, he's my guy. Um he he actually wore my, my shirts like a couple of weeks ago for a media media day. So um, I just, you know, I just wanted to show his him, his love, you know, and then, yeah, that's why I wore it. So. You, do you guys actually have a, a personal relationship? Yeah, we just know each other and uh, we talk uh, sometimes and, you know, he's a, he's actually a mix too, you know, he's a, and then uh, I always look, look at him, you know, uh, like a big brother, uh, he always, he's that kind of like, you know, um, the guy in Japan for baseball right now. So, you know, it's just like, we, he always like take care of me. Uh, he always like teaching me stuff. Like it's different sports, but like, you know, the lifestyle and like how to deal with the medias 
how to how to deal with the people, those kind of stuff. So that's why, and we've been we always like a connection there. Ava, what's he telling us about telling you about how to deal with us, Rui? Say it again. What's he telling you about how to deal with us? We're friendly. Oh no, yeah, I, I mean like <laughs> yeah, by like you know, not you guys, but like you know, like, no, I'm joking. I, outside of voice, <laughs> outside of voice, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Okay, I'll take it. Um, yeah. Just wanted to know what you thought um, Daniel Gafford's effect was tonight. He also had a couple of couple of big dunks for you guys. Say it again. Just wanted to know what you thought Daniel Gafford's effect was tonight. He also oh, had yeah. a couple of big dunks. Yeah, I feel like oh, we need the energy. You know, he brought a good energy today. Um, you know, we we kind of need a guy like that. You know, just giving the energy, dunk, shot block, and stuff, and. I think I think he's young too. I think same same age as me. So you know, it's gonna be fun to play with him. I'm so excited to play with him, and uh, you know, I think he's gonna help a lot this team. You know, uh, I'm so excited about him. Yeah. Chase, Rui, you mentioned him being a similar age. He's also, you know, he plays the five spot. You play the four. Um, how do you think his game could complement yours the more you guys get to grow together and play together? I think we're going to, you know, we're going to have more trust to like backstab, you know, especially like the ball screen. Uh, let's say we, if he got caught or something, then, you know, he always is uh, behind us. So, you know, by protecting the goal. So, you know, that's like, the, that's actually big for us. You know, we need it. And then, yeah, I just, like I said, you know, I'm so excited for him. Um, yeah, I think it's going to be good. I think it's going to be good fit. What were your first impressions of Daniel Gafford in his debut? Uh, he did an amazing job. He did a good job of uh, protecting the rim. Uh, obviously, big size athleticism show tonight, uh, which is big for us, something that we need. And I uh, hope you feel good about how he played because he played great. He did a good job. And, you know, the numbers would suggest you guys were much better defensively tonight. Do you feel like you saw the adjustments that you were looking for on that end of the floor? Uh, I thought we started off, we got a little uh, relaxed in the third quarter, but uh, I thought we did a good job for most of the game of defending how we uh, supposed to defend. Um, so. Some people are still coming over, Russell, give us a second here. Fred, do you have anything? Ooh. I've got another, Matt. Go ahead, Chase. Um, Russ, I, I know you've uh, been, um, you, you formed a pretty nice connection with Rui so far this season. What did you think about that that dunk he had, uh, the, the poster dunk he had? That was nice. Uh, you know, his when he's aggressive, especially at the round of rim, uh, he's tough to stop. Um, and he's been doing that as of late, and tonight was one of those nights where he attacked the basket, used his athleticism, his size uh, to finish at the rim. Ava? Russ, I apologize if Chase already asked you, what was um, the key there in kind of pulling you, yourselves out of the trouble in the fourth quarter there? Uh, we got stops, um, executed, did a good job of executing the night, um, better job than we did in, in New York, of closing the game and, and getting the shots we wanted, executing the plays. Um, you know, which is big for us. And um, with Daniel Gafford, uh, how, I guess, rare is it for a young player to play so within his own game? He seems like he really knows his strengths and kind of sticks them. How helpful is that for you guys? I mean, it's good. You know, he's still learning. He has a uh, unbelievable athleticism and, and feel for the game. So he will learn as we, as we kind of continue to go. And he did a good job tonight of uh, figuring out his position, figuring out how to roll in his spots uh, on the floor, and uh, he did a good job of that. Obviously, Daniel is not the first guy in league history to get traded in the middle of a season, but considering the format of this year with just so few practices and so many games jammed together, I imagine it's more difficult than usual to get acclimated in the middle of the year. How, how do you help him along with that, just with the basics of integrating into the team? Honestly, um, that was, a lot of that, that was just him. He was magnificent tonight. He brought energy. Um, effort on defense, a lot of chatter. That's that's stuff we've needed, and it was infectious. And and he he mentioned you as somebody he said that you were his vet when you guys were in Chicago together. What what is your relationship like? What was your reaction when you saw that he was going to be coming here? I'm, I've I've always loved the way he plays the game. You know, um, 
He's not constant. He's not focused on any kind of glory. He just goes out there and he does what it takes to help his team win. I love that about him. Chase. Robin, do you feel like you guys made uh, the adjustments you were looking for defensively? I mean, um, the results were good, obviously numbers wise, but did you, were you, the things you were looking for, do you feel like you guys put those in action tonight? I thought for the most part, um, I, we, we had some issues with transition for a little bit, but I thought, like I said, um, I thought we came out very focused. Um, I thought we, we were very physical for the most part and for three fourths of the game, which isn't the whole game, but three fourths of the game, we took care of transition, which has been a huge Achilles heel for us. And I know, um, you know, it's been a conversation to try to get Rui to be consistently aggressive uh, on offense. Um, Ru uh, Russ was talking about that. Uh, so what was it like to see him throw down that dunk, uh, the poster dunk he had? That was a lot of fun. That was a lot of fun to see. Um, I was saying on the sideline, it wasn't one of those springy dunks where you knew he was going to go up and dunk on the guy. It was one of those where you had to kind of, the, the, the time slowed down a little bit and you had to sit in your seat and you, you kind of had a little show put out in front of you, a little duel, like what's going to happen here? I enjoyed it immensely. Neil. Hey, Robin, what would you say is the key for you guys to, you know, take this defensive effort and apply it more consistently moving forward, which has been a little bit of your guy's Achilles heel so far this season? Yeah, consistency has definitely been big for us. Um, I think that's that's accountability. We we gotta we gotta make sure each and every uh, each and every one of us that whoever's on our right, whoever's on our left, and our, ourselves, of course that we're doing our job. We're doing what we're, what we're supposed to be doing when we're out on the floor. Zach. Hey, Robin, uh, I see that you're wearing a My Neighbor Totoro t-shirt, Tonari no Totoro t-shirt. Mm -hmm. uh, what inspired this choice today? Oh, you know, uh, it felt like a good day for it. Um, it was a, a nice, uh, pretty nice, sunny Washington day. Um, Felt like spring is here and spring, you know, I, I feel like the forest spirits, the forest sprites kind of come out in that time. And obviously Totoro is now batting a thousand at one and oh, so good luck charm there too. Ghibli series. I, it, you're going to be hard pressed to come up with somebody who can beat Totoro. That's, that's going to be difficult. It's going to take you a while to think of that. That's a good point. Okay. Thank you. Ava. Um, Robin, I came in late, apologies, but it sounded like you were talking about um, Daniel and maybe a dunk of his at the beginning. What, it, kind of a silly question, but what does a dunk do to a team energy-wise? Oh, I, yeah, that's infectious. Um, obviously, you know, good, good teams, you, you love seeing your, your teammates succeed, but a dunk, that's almost the, that's that's the apex of that. That's the apex of that feeling. It's immediately infectious and it's contagious. Um, and then, what was the key for you guys late tonight in the fourth quarter to kind of pull yourselves out of trouble? I thought we took care of. Um, I thought we took care of transition. That was that was the big uh, that was a big problem for us. We all agreed on that in the third quarter, in the beginning of the fourth, and that's something we 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 gooded down and we took care of.